There's nothing wrong with making these WordPress mistakes, but if you want to create a rock solid professional online presence, then you want to watch to the end of this video to make sure that you are creating the best possible website for your business. Let's jump into these mistakes that you have made, might still be doing, or mistakes you can avoid when using WordPress. Be sure to stick around for the last mistake because this could cost you clients and money in the bank. The first mistake that beginner WordPress users make is not deleting the dummy content. Now, if you don't delete the dummy content, then what's going to happen is that content is going to get indexed on Google and people are going to be able to view that content on your website. So what I recommend you do is as soon as you have installed WordPress, you go into your posts and your pages and you delete that dummy content. So you'll come to your posts here and click on all posts and you'll notice there is this hello world blog post. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the trash button. You're then going to go to trash and you are going to delete this permanently. We're going to do the same under pages. Under pages, we have a sample page. So we're going to trash this, go to trash, and then delete it permanently. Now we can also see there's a privacy policy and all websites require this. So we aren't going to delete this dummy content. The next mistake is not deleting plugins that come standard with every WordPress installation. So if we come to plugins here on the left hand side, we can see there are two plugins that come standard with our installation of WordPress. So it's the Akismet Anti-Spam and that's something I highly recommend you do use. The second is this Hello Dolly plugin. This is a really strange plugin. When you activate it, you'll randomly see a lyric from Hello Dolly in the upper right of your admin screen on every page. It's not something you need on your WordPress website. So I highly recommend you do delete that. Number one, it's taking up space on your hosting account and you don't need that. Number two is if it becomes unstable or it's outdated, then you are opening your website up to hackers. So what you're going to do is just click on the delete button, then click OK and that delete the plugin. The third mistake is one of the worst mistakes that I see being made, and that is using admin as your username. And the reason you don't want to use admin as your username is because it's the standard one that comes that when you set up WordPress, it will automatically be there. And so it's easy for hackers to guess your username. So if you come to users here on the left hand side, you'll see I have used admin as my username. We want to use anything but admin for our username. So what we're going to do is we're going to click add new and we're going to create a new account. So let's call this NT web design and we're going to put in our email address. So we're going to choose a different email address and then we're going to change up the password and we're going to make sure we are administrator. We don't need to send that. Let me just copy this and we're going to add a new user. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to log out of our admin account. So we're going to log out and then we're going to log in with the new details that we just created. Okay, so we have just done that. So I'm going to add the password and uh, we might change up the password as well. So we can go to users now and what we need to do is to delete this admin and assign all the content to NT Web Design. So we're going to click on this. We're going to go to these this drop down. We're going to click delete and we're going to click apply. And then we're going to attribute all the content to this new user that we've just created. And we're going to click confirm deletion. The next mistake that I see is not keeping the plugins up to date or WordPress or the themes. Now, what I like to liken our plugins to is the apps on our iPhone. And often you get push notifications on your iPhone that say you need to update your apps. And if you don't update your apps on your iPhone, it makes it slow or it breaks your iPhone. Likewise with plugins on your website, if you don't update them on a negative term, then your website is open to hackers it can and it can break your website on a more positive term then you are not open to all the additions and developments that developers are constantly adding and updating on plugins and wordpress and themes so to update your plugins your wordpress and your themes you're going to come to your dashboard here you're going to click on updates and once you're here you can see you have the latest version of wordpress
WordPress, you can see plugins here and you can see themes. So your themes are all up to date, but you do have one plugin that needs to be updated. So to update that, you're just going to click on this box and click update plugins. Now this process of updating your plugins takes a couple of minutes and it's something I highly recommend you go into your website and you do on a monthly basis. The fifth mistake that I see being made is relying on host providers to take backups of websites. Now I do not recommend you rely on your host provider to take a backup of your website. I strongly suggest you install a plugin and you take automatic backups on at least a monthly basis and send it to remote storage. So to do this you're going to come to plugins and you're going to click on add new and we are going to add the free plugin which is called updraft plus and we're going to type it in the top right hand corner there and this is the plugin we're going to install. So this is a free plugin. You can set it up to take scheduled backups and send those to remote storage like Dropbox or Google Drive. So we're going to install that and then we are going to activate it. Okay, you can go through here this little tutorial guide or you can click the cross button and you're going to come to settings here and click on updraft plus backups. Now we're first going to set this up. So we're going to go to this third tab, click on settings and we are going to set how often we would like the backups to be taken. So what kind of schedule we want that on. If you're making changes on a more frequent basis, you're obviously going to take backups on a daily or weekly schedule. If you are not making that many changes on your website, then I recommend on a monthly basis is perfect. So a monthly schedule is perfect. So you're going to choose monthly for both your files and your database and then you're going to retain at least one of those backups. Now the next stage is to choose your remote storage. So you've got options such as Dropbox, Google Drive and even email. I recommend going with Google Drive. That's my preferred choice. So I'm going to click on Google Drive and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to sign in with my Google account. That's going to then say, do you want to leave the site? You can say yes. It's going to then take you to Google. You can click your Google, your Gmail account or your Google account, and you need to give Updraft Plus access to your Google account. So you click OK, and then you're going to complete the setup and then your Updraft Plus is linked with your Google account. Okay, so now it's going to automatically take backups on a monthly basis and send it to Google. But if you are going to go into your website and you decide to make changes on your pages or your posts or you're updating anything, you can do a manual backup. So to do that, you'll come to this first tab here, which says backup restore. You're going to click on this blue button. Make sure these three boxes are ticked here and you're going to click backup now. That's then going to go through the process of backing up your website and sending it to your remote storage of choice. Um, the process can take a couple of minutes. So you just leave it to do its thing and you can browse on another browser and then come back when it has been completed. Time frame really depends on how big your website is. So how many images you have, how many plugins you have, etc. So you can see it's going through the process of uploading my files to remote storage and once it has been completed, it will say the backup has finished running. The sixth mistake that I see being made is not removing standard themes that are installed on WordPress. So if you come to appearance here and you go to your themes, you'll notice that when you set up WordPress, it automatically installs these three themes themes and it activates the 2022 theme or the latest theme that is out there from WordPress. So then it also has 2020 and it has 2021. So you might go ahead and you might add a new theme and then you will have four themes up here. So what I recommend is you keep your main theme the one that is active and then you keep one other theme as a backup that you can switch to in case there's any problems with your website. So you'll obviously go with the latest version of WordPress's theme. So this is 2022. So I'm going to delete this one here. So you click on that and then click delete and click OK. Okay, so there we have the one that's active and then a fallback theme. So the reason we want to delete unnecessary themes is again, we don't want them to be outdated and us to forget about updating them and then our website is open to it getting hacked or broken. The seventh mistake is a simple one to make and it is not setting up your permalinks properly. So if you come to your settings and you go to permalinks, you will see that our permalinks are set up as testsite.nicolatweed.com and then it's got this 
it's got our day and our, our full date and then the name of our page or our post and generally we don't really want this to happen like this I prefer it to be nicolatwee.com and then the page name sometimes you might set it up and it might say index.php and then forward slash the page name and um, when someone browses they don't really want to see index.php so you want to choose your correct permalink settings if you are blogging you might want to have this or you might want to have the category name as well so you can go to your custom structure and then what you can do is you can pop in there your category so so we're going to leave that in there so it'll say testsite.nicolatweet.com category and then the post name I prefer to just say post name and then I click save changes Another mistake and one that's quite easy to make is installing a million and one plugins and installing the wrong plugins that could potentially break your website. So to install a website you'll just come to plugins and you'll click add new. That's then going to pop up with all of the most popular and featured plugins from WordPress. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of plugins to choose from on the WordPress directory and people are continuously adding to these and updating them and there's basically a plugin for anything. So if you think about it, whatever function you want to happen on your WordPress website, there is probably a plugin for it. You can go through the popular plugins, you can go through recommended, you can go through favorites. But what I see all too often happen is people installing way too many plugins and then there's over like 30 plugins on a website that they're not even using. So what do you need to look for in a plugin? So you need to look for how many installations there are. And then a good thing to look at is as well is the ratings and to look at the reviews. Then the next thing is to look at when it was last updated and if it is compatible with your version of WordPress. I also recommend going to more details and then going and seeing what the description is like, what people are saying. So this one's getting quite a lot of one stars compared to the five stars. So you might want to just see what is going on and then also looking at the reviews. So going to the reviews and seeing what people are saying about this plugin. And then if you say, for example, you install this plugin and you see that it's not actually the right plugin for you, I highly re recommend you go to your plugins and you delete that plugin. So you don't just leave it on your website. If you're not going to be using it, then I recommend deleting it and clicking OK. The ninth mistake I see being made is not using a security plugin. Most websites are open to hackers and I've said this throughout this video is a lot of these beginner mistakes open you up to hackers and open up your WordPress website to it being hacked and broken, which is something we don't want to. We want to protect our investment. So I see people not using security plugins and this is an easy thing to set up. All you need to do is click add new in plugins and look for for the WordFriends plugin. So we're going to type in WordFence and then we are going to install and activate this WordFence security firewall and malware scan. So we're going to click install now and activate that plugin. Um, and then that's going to protect um, our website from people trying to log into our website or from any other serious security issues. So we're going to click activate. And then once it has been installed, you will see WordFriends here on the left hand side here you can go through this process where you add in your email address and you can get security alerts from the website to say what is going on and if you want you can sign up to their mailing list so let me pop in my email address here I'm gonna say no and I'm gonna say yes and I'm gonna click continue if you want you can upgrade to a premium license I don't think that is necessary so I'm gonna click no thanks and there we go WordFence has been set up if you go to WordFence here you can go to the dashboard that then walks you through a little guide of the dashboard which you can go through and you can click here just to enable automatic updates and then here you need to just click configure and download these files and click continue just to set up the firewall. Now this last mistake is one of the biggest and can actually cost you clients and money and this has happened to me before so what it is is not actually testing your contact form to ensure that you are getting the emails that are coming through from your website. So on my website I have this contact page with a contact form and I have created this with WP Forms. So WP Forms is a free plugin. They do have a premium license which is well worth the upgrade. So I've created a contact form, put it on a page and I can test that. So testing it is pretty simple. All you need to do is to fill it in. 
and click test and click submit. So the first thing to check is to see that it's actually working and when you click submit that it's going through and you're not getting an error when you click submit. So here we get our submit message which says, which says thanks for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. So now I should get an email in my inbox with the information. So now we want to go to our inbox and we're here on my inbox and I can see that this email has come through to me. So now we can see all the correct information is coming through to me and that email is working perfectly. However, if it is not working, you do want to set up the WP SMTP plugin. And I have done another tutorial guide, which I'm going to link here to make sure that you set up your SMTP details correctly and that you are receiving the emails from your website. Remember, if you want more videos to help you create a website and make using WordPress super simple, then and be sure to subscribe to my channel before you go. And if you are tired of hiding behind a coming soon page or having a create website on your to-do list, then you want to make sure that you watch this video right here where I walk you through the whole process from start to finish in creating your very first WordPress website. Trust me, if you are done hiding behind a coming soon page, then you want to click the link and watch this video right now.